Hey friends, I hope y'all have had a good weekend and I hope that um, you are still reading along with us. I was looking to see how many people it looks like might be reading and it looks like the numbers are low. So maybe you're on vacation. But the good thing about um, having a book is you can take it with you. The good thing about having a video is you can watch it hopefully on the road or um, on the go, wherever you are. But I hope you're really enjoying this series. So just as a reminder, we're reading the high time for heroes and <clears throat> we last left off on chapter four and we were talking jack and annie were talking to uh florence and they were they had just gotten onto a boat and remember they were supposed to be um babysitting a monkey and so they were with miss Flo florence nightingale on a boat and they were going across and um they had just read uh, about the Valley of the Queens, and, it, and the clue that they just read was about 3,000 years ago, the wives of the pharaohs were buried in the Valley of the Queens near the Valley of the Kings. The tombs were cut out of different, out of limestone cliffs. And so then they were kind of having a little chat with Miss Nightingale to she, see if she was familiar with that. All right, so chapter five uh, is called Valley of the Queens. Miss Nightingale, your donkey, uh, Allie called out. The small boy stood with a donkey and a larger pack horse. How lovely to see you, Allie, said Florence. Mustafa stepped into the shadow, shallow water and pulled the rowboat onto the bank. He then helped everyone out of the boat. Jack and Annie stood with Koku and watched Florence mount the donkey. Mustafa uh, climbed onto his pack horse. Jack felt hep helpless. He didn't know how to stop Florence from leaving them. Have a nice afternoon, said Annie. Florence looked back at them. I hope you have a nice afternoon too, she said. I would ask you to join me, but I am, well, I'm afraid I need a bit of quiet and solitude right now. We understand, said Annie. Thank you, said Florence. She turned back to the guide. Lead the way, Mustafa. Mustafa and his horse headed away from the river. Florence followed on her donkey. Jack, Annie, and Koku watched as they headed up the dirt road toward the distant mountains. Soon they disappeared from view. Darn, breathed Annie. Yeah, said Jack. <clears throat> Donkeys for you too, Ollie asked, coming up behind them. You can travel to the ruins without a guide, you know. Annie looked at Jack. Want to, she asked. How do we get to the Valley of the Queens? Jack asked Ali. Very easy. The boy pointed to the road. Travel the same way they went, he said. Follow that road and never return. Oh, I'm sorry. Follow that road and never turn. That sounds simple, said Annie. Let's go. Wait, said Jack. He took all of his Egyptian coins from his pouch and showed them to Ali. Do we have enough money to rent two donkeys? Oh, yes. Ali took only one coin. Good for two donkeys all afternoon, he said. Okay, we'll do it, said Jack. Yay, said Annie. Good, I will get them for you, said Ali. He headed to the donkeys standing under the trees. I wonder if there's anything we need to know about riding donkeys, said Jack. He opened their traveler's handbook again and looked up donkey. He read aloud. Donkeys were first trained to carry travelers over 6,000 years ago in Egypt. The animals are easy to ride, but the traveler must approach them slowly and treat them with kindness and affection. Easy, said Annie. That's the way I always treat animals. Hee-haw! Here they are, said Ali, leading two donkeys toward Jack and Annie. Both donkeys were sandy brown with sweet faces. Their saddles were blankets made of heavy, made of heavy cloth. Their long, furry ears twitched to keep the flies away. Hello there, Annie said to one of the donkeys. You have ears like a rabbit. Can I call you Bunny? Oh, brother, said Jack. Talk to yours too, Annie coached Jack. Call her a sweet name, kindness and affection, remember? Jack rolled his eyes and scratched the ear of the other donkey. Hi, um, honey, want to go for a ride? He said. The donkey nuzzled her head against Jack's hand. Ali laughed. I think my donkeys like you very much, he said. Holding Kaku, Annie climbed onto the back of Bunny while Jack climbed onto Honey. You must take water, said Ali. He tied ten canteens to the donkey's saddles. Come back by sundown. There is danger in the hills after dark. 
Like, what kind of danger? asked Jack. Wild jackals, tomb raiders, said Ali. Got it, said Jack. We'll be back before dark, said Annie. Way before dark, said Jack. Goodbye, Ali. Thank you, said Annie. Giddy up, bunny. She led the way with Kaku on her shoulder. Follow them, honey, please, said Jack. The two donkeys left the lush river bank and trotted up the same road that Mustafa and Florence had traveled. Our donkeys remind me of the camels we rode to Baghdad. Annie called back to Jack. Remember Beauty and Cutie? Oh, brother, said Jack. The camels had nearly ruined their mission. Bunny and Honey trotted past cornfields, palm trees, sheep, or sheep, goats, mud huts, and children playing in the dirt. When the children saw Jack and Annie, they laughed and pointed at the baboon riding on Annie's shoulder. Soon the dirt road opened onto a wider, rougher road that crossed a flat plain. The plain was bordered by the sand-colored mountains. Hot breezes blew clouds of dust as the donkeys clomped side by side over the dry, cracked earth. Through the gritty haze, Jack could see ruins scattered about the plain, broken columns, and chunks of ancient walls half buried in sand. Look, said Annie. Okay, here's the picture. You see them on their donkeys there? Two giant statues loomed ahead against the blue sky. Enormous pharaohs on thrones as tall as five-story buildings. Let's stop for a minute, Jack called. He pulled on his donkey's reins and took out the traveler's handbook. He found a picture of the statues and read aloud. More than 3,000 years old, the Colossi of Mem... 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 None. That's a weird name. <clears throat> Once guarded the temple of a pharaoh. Menon means ruler of the dawn. Ancient Egyptians believed one of the giant statues sang every day at sunrise. Jack took out his notebook and pencil and wrote, Menon equals ruler of the dawn. He looked at the ruins again. The Pharaoh's temple had vanished with time. The statues were faceless, their bodies broken and worn away by thousands of years of wind and sand. The wounded giant still looked amazingly powerful, though. Through the dry heat, Jack could imagine their ancient song, Hee-haw! Jack jumped. What's that? A donkey up ahead somewhere, said Annie. Past those temple ruins. I'll bet it's Florence's donkey. Hurry, let's go. Jack put away his notebook and pencil in the, hand, in the handbook. Giddy up, he said, and his donkey started walking again. Annie, when we find Florence, try to act surprised so she won't think we're following her. Be cool. Don't worry, I'm always cool, said Annie, but we'll have to find a way to stick close to her so we can find out her secret of greatness. Yeah, Jack sighed. The only problem is I'm having trouble seeing what makes her so great, he said. He thought Florence seemed unhappy and unfriendly. But she is great, said Annie. I know she is. Jack and Annie kept riding their donkeys through the heat and dust. When they stopped at the ruins of an ancient temple, there were no signs of Florence or Mustafa among the broken columns and crumbling walls. There were no signs of any living things. I don't see them, said Jack. We must have lost them somewhere. He shivered despite the heat. The quiet felt spooky to him. He grabbed his canteen and took a long drink of water. Annie did the same. Then she poured a little bit of water into her cupped hand and offered it to Kaku. Do you think we should keep going to the Valley of the Queens? Said Annie. I guess so, said Jack. Florence and Mustafa are probably already there, said Annie. Giddy up, bunny. As the donkeys walked toward the cliffs, Jack couldn't shake his uneasy feeling. Everything was the color of mud and sand. The only other living creatures were some vultures circling in the sky. As Jack started stared up at the birds, Annie brought her donkey to a halt. Oh, wow, those must be the tombs of the Pharaoh's wives, said Annie. She pointed to several huge square holes carved into the limestone walls of the cliffs. Yeah, Jack shuddered. You know, I think I'd like to go back. This place gives me the creeps. Are you afraid of ghosts? said Annie. Jack shook his head. I don't know, maybe. Let's go, he said. We can wait for Florence back at Charles and Selena's bo boat. Don't you at least want to peek inside one of the tombs, said Annie? Nope, Jack said. Well, okay, you don't have to, said Annie, but if I don't take a look, I'll always wonder what I missed. Kaku and I will be right back. No, Annie, let's leave this place, said Jack. Just one teeny minute, said Annie. 
Holding on to the baby baboon, she climbed off her donkey. We'll just take a quick look in that one. She pointed to the nearest tomb cut into the mountain. I promise we won't go inside. We'll hurry back. With Kaku sitting on her shoulder, Annie took off toward the tomb. Jack's donkey shook her head and kicked her hind legs. What's wrong, honey? said Jack. Annie's donkey started acting strangely, too. She brayed loudly and turned away from the cliffs. Calm down, Bunny, said Jack, trying to speak in a soothing voice. It's okay, it's okay. Something was clearly bothering both animals. Jack's donkey tried to turn around, and Annie's donkey began trotting back the way they'd come. Wait, Bunny, Jack called as Annie's donkey sped away. Annie, he shouted, come back now. Bunny's running off. Annie was standing at the entrance of the tomb. She turned around. What? she called. Koku let out a bone-chilling shriek. From behind a pile of rocks near the tomb came two dirty, gray, wolf-like animals. The two creatures looked at Annie, then loped in her direction. Oh, man, said Jack. Jackals! Oh, my goodness gracious. Annie is always getting them into trouble. She is quite the wanderer. She should have listened to Jack and stayed on the donkey. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. All right, well, that's all the time I have for today. <clears throat> um, and this week, I'm going to be just recording um, several videos, and I may only have time for one chapter at a time. I have family coming into town, and so um, I am going to be busy this week, but I want to make sure and make it a priority to at least get one chapter read every day. I love that some of y'all are reading ahead and then reading, rereading the chapters with me. Um, that's, that can only help you become a better reader. So, hey, make sure and comment down below and let me know if, um, if you're reading with me and what maybe book you would like to read next. Um, we are on chapter six, but there's only 10 chapters in this book. So we're going to be done with this book by the end of the week. If we read at least one chapter a day, if we read two chapters a day, we're definitely going to be done by the end of this week. So I need, um, <clears throat> I need you to just vote or let me know what kind of book, um, we don't have to do Magic Tree House. We can do other books too. Um, I am going to also read, uh, there's a new Peter Reynolds, uh, book that I have that I want to read to y'all called uh, The Word Collector uh, that I got at our spring uh, book fair at our school. So anyway, I hope that you're enjoying it. I hate to leave you on a crazy part, but I wonder what's going to happen. Hopefully everything will be okay. It always usually is. All right. Thank you for reading with me. See you soon. Bye.